What up, family? Let's get a new supporter, Mary Dash Twenty. Married in the lead today is Sinful Sunday in my city, Chicago. May fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. So they say. Um, I got about nine days in a wake up till my fifty-fifth birthday. It is seven fifty-three a.m. what they say over here I got 745 because I like tricking myself and the people who you know like playing games and stuff I don't play games not with my life livelihood Mary McAmiris my higher power and with my family even though I know we are strange we are still family, and I try to look out for them because I know no matter what happens and no matter how much money you may or may not have sold your soul for and me out, I know it could be deadly for all of us. That's a big needle right there. Trust the scientism. That's a big needle. You know, right down the street from where I reside, 6210 South Kenbarger Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60637, apartment 308. Just look for the white door if you're trying to kill me. For white people. You remember the incident where this white lady thought she was on her floor and she went in somebody's apartment. And it was a guy and she killed him. Because she said it was the wrong apartment. Or she, they later said it was the wrong apartment, but she thought, I guess, he was in her apartment. I got, um, they're gone now since I didn't close my blinds. It's a white couple that, um, stays across the way. You know, I can't even open up my blinds because I don't want them peeping in and I guess once they noticed me closing my blinds they decided to go back in they living the American dream that I worked my ass off for they have a dog and everything you know nice building they just uh, built since I've been in this location uh, since uh, May 31st of 2017 but like I was saying, down the street, there used to be a, a hospital called High Park Hospital. I know because, you know, I was there when I was younger because I tried going swimming in Lake Michigan. And, you know, because I guess so many dogs was washing up in the lake, you know, I caught a, a fungus or a disease or something you understand what I'm saying and I had to get some uh, some help um, I also went and they put me on the psych ward there after 1995 I was kind of just kind of homeless after I gave my story again to the streets and um, Oprah Winfrey on three cassette tapes, front and back, and they knew, like they know now, who and what I stand for, and that's, or against child abuse. And stand up for myself, basically. I am not a leader. I'm just a victim that grew up to be able to tell you the truth, and they wanted to exploit me. And, uh, yeah, there go the white guy right there, chilling. But yeah. Let me close the window because, you know what I'm saying, they listen to everything. You see how they pop up and stuff. But, yeah, I'm just a person that um, survived and try to save some children, you know, because somebody saved me. And I believe my purpose here on earth is to, uh, you know, help the unfortunates that could have been saved but because they love playing the game over and over. You know, and we just 
like a dog chasing our tail, never catching it. You understand what I'm saying? Because white people want us to, or foreigners, want us, the Native Americans, to be beneath them for some reason. But this time it's going to backfire on everybody. Um, yeah, they had me on the psych ward at uh, High Park Hospital, you know what I'm saying? And um, I knew this girl named Melanie. And, you know, I used to help her come up. I told her how to, you know, hustle in the streets by getting taffy apples and, you know, selling, you know, merchandise to get money. And um, she ended up becoming a nurse. And um, I asked her to bring me some cigarettes. Now, if she was a real nurse, she would have been like, no, you can't smoke in the hospital. Don't, you know, but she didn't care. I seen her later on in life and she basically was threatening me as if, you know, she was better than me now. And, you know, her being a nurse, and I think she's probably gang-related. And, um, you know, they come up off of me, and then they threaten me like I should be worried. It's like, you should be worried because that's why I didn't pursue my nursing career. Because I know if I get hit in the head or, you know, my head blown off, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. So I was like, you know, but I don't drink, drug, smoke, or fornicate, so I represent other ways. Long story short, that hospital down the street that used to be High Park Hospital, it is now a laboratory. Yeah, it's no longer High Park Hospital. Yeah, it's a laboratory for people like these people who want to dissect you, cut you up like surgery, and bury you in a hurry with no worry. See, they want to find out what is made up of people such as myself. Uh... Child abuse victim, been raped by five guys, poisoned six times, beat up by gang bangers, abandoned by my family, friends, Mary McMyers too, left for dead, and still have a cool demeanor about myself. But not only that, I'm the originator of rap music also. And I was in Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973 for, um, you know, snitching on the ones that was trying to kill me. Shit, what? You thought I wasn't? So, you know, they say snitches get stitches. Well, you get your ass whooped for breakfast, lunch, or dinner and see if you don't say something. You understand what I'm saying? If you get hungry enough, you got to open up your mouth. So you might as well start snitching on the ones that's trying to kill you and stop you from eating. My rap legacy was supposed to, um, you know, in poverty and everything else. My people worked so hard, you know, because we was motivated by the Martin Luther King and the Malcolm X and Woo Out the Bam, but it's always people out there, the devil, that steer people the wrong way. And that's why, you know, the devil's children now, the ones that I helped raise are the very ones and the parents that came up with me are the very ones that are crossing me and my real Mary McAmyers and, you know, basically it's process of elimination to see who going to get the minds and the souls of this new generation that's coming up. Because quiet skeptic, the, the millenniums, they are, they too old already. You understand what I'm saying? I looked at a, at a video, TikTok, boy, three years old, got more sense than older people or whatever and stuff. You know, he had his little suit on and. Had his little prom date or whatever. You know, they was graduating from probably kindergarten or whatever. And he was real, you understand what I'm saying? Adult life. Can't get that in this building where I'm at with a bunch of men and stuff. And maybe six girls and the rest guys. And it's about a 50-unit building. So, you know, it's a camera by my door that wasn't here when I first got here. Basically, they just want to exploit me for the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that I've been... um coming up with and I worked my ass off to obtain without a um, public school education. I barely got my GED. I wanted to get something to prove that, you know, I'm not retarded. They had me in a special ed class when I was younger. I didn't know the difference between the apple and the orange at the age of six, but by the age of eight, you know, I became the originator of rap music in 1975. And having gotten a new car, or a day at the spa or a vacation, I asked for $2 million tax free. You understand what I'm saying? Thinking, you know, they'll leave me alone in 1995 and they pretty much just shitted on me and put me on the psych ward. Made Oprah Winfrey a billionaire. 
We accumulated, me and my Mary McAmiris that watched me grow up in the street selling general merchandise, music, and things of that nature. I love music. I really do. And um, it's a shame they have uh, demonized it. It's in the devil's hands now. I can't do nothing with it. But, uh, you know, for the most part, the people that grew up with me, they got a little bit of understanding about what's going on today, and that's what they didn't want. They wanted me to die. They was trying to kill me, literally, but I peeped game. And, um, you know, they still trying to do it. They're just trying to get somebody young, dumb, and full of cum or hungry to do it for a little bit of nothing. I heard what's going on in, um, what is that, Buffalo, New York. I don't know if it's real or not, but they say there's 80% black people, colored people, whatever the case is. And anytime it's a bunch of us, like it was in my city, Chicago, back in the, you know, when I was born in 67, on up to about, you know, 1995, there was a lot of colored people, you understand? And then, you know, the foreigners start flooding in, like now, and now I've got white neighbors, you understand what I'm saying, that be stalking, pretty much. They want you to hate on them for some reason, and I don't hate, but I should be able to open up my windows because, you know, I pay my little fees or whatever to stay here. You know, when I shouldn't be having to pay anything, because I guarantee you they're not paying. You understand what I'm saying? But they trying to suck up all the game. Long story short, I heard it was some rioting downtown in my city, Chicago. And, you know, quiet as care about a teenager, you know, but I believe it's they people. You know, they send people to agitate, you know, real motherfuckers like they did with Martin Luther King, you know, when they hit him in the head and stuff like that with a brick or whatever and stuff, and. You know, they caught the guy and they said the FBI, you understand what I'm saying, put the guy up to doing it or to push Martin or whatever the case was. You understand? So this is what I go through on a daily basis in and out of this, um, you know, trap building that I'm at because they know I am worth the most. And they wanted me to go off and feel some kind of way, which I don't because what I do know, when I die, we all die. You understand what I'm saying? I believe that. You know, everything the white people have done to stop us or whoever is behind all this, it has um, backfired on them and it's spread like wildflower and shit. You know, it's, they got this movie called Cujo. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. You know, when things start happening, as far as, as, far as scientific experiments and things of that nature, and they go wrong, you know, it tends to just sprew out into the land and things of that nature. Next thing you know, you got AIDS, you got coronavirus, you got drill music, you, you got all kind of mess and stuff. You got teen violence, you got teen suicide. You know, see, I tried to save the children, and I could have, and I did. I've been doing this over 45 years. I'll be 55 years old. Mm, 10 more days, and they don't want me to see that at all, but the devil is a lie. Mary McAmara stepped the game up. We're going to call this video The Leaders Today Was the Victims of the Past and the Leaders We Need Today. You understand what I'm saying? So we all could be a leader. I told y'all that long time ago. But there's people in this building right now, old as fuck, that have been trolling me since I was a little girl, that is trying to stop the guy Paul in the office from communicating with me because he wants me to hate on him, but he doesn't, and I know he doesn't. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. It was this guy outside of my door sweating bullets. Somebody sent him to try and kill me on camera. I've had all kind of incidents in this building on camera, but when it's something, you know, happened to me, and I tell them, they say, oh, I can't do nothing about it. I said, oh, okay, don't worry about it. I got some Mary McAmiris out there. Hey, how y'all like my, my eyebrows? I had cut my hair because they gave me cancer in 2016, held me down on the Cook County Jail psych ward and stuff to try to, you know, get me to go off. And, of course, I didn't. And I actually didn't cut my eyebrows. So I said, well, let me just do something different. These are my Hitler eyebrows and stuff. For real. You remember Adolf Hitler? You know what I mean? You know how, you know what Hitler said? He said he got all his, you know, expertise on how you know they treated people in America you understand we are our own worst enemy and other people adapt to our um 
behavior. And because, you know, some people got that king baby syndrome that they talk about in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, they, you know, feel as though they're entitled to everything and they want to blame it on, you know, drugs, alcohol, music, abandonment. You know, no, it's the way people treat you and victimize you. And then you get tired and you demand your respect and, you know, your legacy, your, you know, reputation back. You know, they trying to literally take everything from me a little bit at a time. And, you know, the little I got left, they want that too, you know. So I'm, they want me walking on pins. I need them. They try to box me in and, you know, you know, put me in the, you know, as a house nigga when I've been in the streets all my life. For real, I grew myself up. And the kids out there that grew up with me. That's now 20, 30 years old or whatever and stuff. They know that to be so. And they know everybody could have been a billionaire and we could have, you know, exchanged ideas and, you know, uh, supported each other just on some real, real stuff. But because some people want to keep us, you know, as children, you know, that I wanted to free you mentally. They said, Harriet Tubman freed us physically. You know, we freed ourselves. You know, it's for the people who want it, not for the people who need it. Because everybody didn't want to be free. They wanted to stay, you know, on on the plantation and, you know, by their master. I'm not like that. Mm -mm. My birthday wish, I swear to God, you don't want to know what, what I'm thinking, for real. So, if anything happens to me, I'm here to tell you, my higher power is real. For real, for real. And um, I've been too damn lucky, if that's what you want to call it. Because all the stuff that I named that I've been through, I don't think most people could have survived. Just the thought, you understand what I'm saying? Of somebody threatening them, you know what I'm saying? Now, when they put the gun to my head, the police, quote unquote, slave patrollers. Uh, but we free, remember that. That's what they said. Not too far from here. You understand what I'm saying? On Maryland. You got to remember that. Because um, it is my land. But, you know, I'm willing to share it. But, you know, it's like a person you invite over that never want to leave and stuff. That's what I'm dealing with. So they put the gun to my head after they figure out who and what I stand for in 1995 when I put my voice to three cassette tapes front and back to the sound of music. And the music was loud and clear. And, you know, you know, they try to get me to go off and stuff. So, you know, the police put the gun to my head. I told them to put a trigger, bitch. You understand what I'm saying? Why they ain't put a trigger in? You know what I mean? That's all I'm trying to figure out. Because, see, I was ready to die like Biggie. You know what I mean? Real tough. Now I'm ready to live because I've accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish. And that is, you know, my legacy and my good standing in the community now, like I said, I'm not trying to be no leader, but there are, you know, a lot of people out there who would love to take my legacy and claim it for themselves because they was never a leader. They was the ones victimizing the ones who rose from the ashes. Tupac called it a rose from concrete. So if y'all Tupac fan, for real, for real, just kind of Put me in his place. And you you know how, what he went through. I'm, I'm going through worse. Okay. I had to save him to bring Eminem in the forefront. So y'all can see how white people kind of think. So we can understand what we're dealing with. So you know how I do. I take these balls right here and I break them. Because the sixth ball is missing. I don't know what happened to it. I ain't going to lie. I'm still looking for it. This is the sixth ball right here. And then I. Flip the Bible and, you know, everything I do tends to just fall on deaf ears. I do it because I know one day they think they're going to be able to come off of me one, like, up off of me one last time. Like, I ain't going to get nothing out the deal. I get $10,000 a year. That ain't enough to do nothing with. And that most of that goes to living expenses and stuff and food. I don't get a link card. And I got to watch out for the killers out there because I can't afford to die. So, Mary McAmara in Buffalo. I don't know if it's real or not. Or people just, you know, acting. But uh, hopefully 
That's not the case. Because in AA, they said after a while, you will not know the difference between the real and the fake. But they also say, listen for the similarities. So when you hear my story, listen for the, my truths. Listen for the similarities with the ones that you know that's lying to you. Because Tupac also say, support the real and not the fake. And I got surrounded by a lot of fake ass motherfuckers. I ain't gonna lie. My every move is a calculated step and trouble follows me everywhere I go. But I love it. You know why? At least they noticing me now. All right. And nine ball just popped up off the table. Put that right there. See what we got. Got 10. All I do is win, win, win. Got the 12. You understand what I'm saying? And of course, I'm number one. Jesus had 12 disciples on my mama. What's that? 22 and one. Yep. 23. They said somebody killed my mother. Her funeral was March 23rd of 2000. Whether it happened or not, I don't know. They thought for sure that would do it. See, you can't kill my higher power and you can't kill a spirit. And, you know, like I said, I don't drink, drug, smoke, or fornicate. And I'm the perfect person to talk to these children out here to let them know. If I can make it, you can make it too. Don't give up because these old people wanted to hold you down just like they held me down. Okay? And gave me cancer. I know I don't look like what I've been through, but... They working on trying to, you know, make me look like crap. Believe me when I tell you. It's just I have a high tolerance for bullshit, I guess. And I'm just not really to um, let them go that far. So if you see me out there going through something for real, because after I turn 55, I'm not going to be, you know, playing the little childish games no more. I believe my higher power gave me time enough to live out my childhood because I did not have a childhood. I was a sex slave, you know. They child trafficked me. They worked me like a Hebrew slave. And I was able to, you know, I, you know, live my childhood out in this trap building. And since they brought me down May 31st, 2008, for so-called disarmed the police officer, something I did not do. Traffic stop was, what, tinted windows? What, you going to pull me over for wearing tinted glasses now? Problems, that's all. Here we go. All right, this is uh, on page 490. And 491, this is Esther, 4, 5, 6, and if you flip it, 7. You know what I'm saying? Because 6 goes over here, so might as well do the 4, 5, 6, and 7. I was born in uh, May 25th. 1967, I got four nieces. If you drop that zero, you got 490, I mean, 49 for the page. And the devil always come from behind, and they always know ahead of time. Listen to the um, song by Immortal Technique, Dance with the Devil. You know, uh, this is Esther. Um... I look at it like Easter. You know, I had got violated in Mississippi on Easter day one day by a teenage guy, supposed to have been my cousin. I ain't tell nobody. But uh, I'm snitching now. Yep. Peace. Step your game up. Hey, mean what you say, say what you mean, because there's cameras everywhere for a reason. And, you know, I can't lie even I wanted to. I like the pressure. But I love the music. Peace.